Hi guys, it's Kath. Today, I'm showing you how I built this mid-century modern style cabinet in miniature. It was inspired by this gorgeous cabinet I saw on this website, and I had to make a miniature replica of it for my dollhouse. Just like the real life version, these doors slide open and shut, and all the drawers slide in and out. This is made with real wood and stained in this warm pine color. I love the style and the way it looks in my dollhouse living room. Let me show you the basic shapes we'll need to build it. The main structure of this cabinet is a rectangular prism, so we'll need a bunch of rectangles to build it. First is the big back piece. It's just a larger rectangle. Then the bottom and top pieces. These are a bit thinner. These are our three largest pieces. Then we'll need the two sides. One thing that we'll need on the top and bottom pieces is a little slit across the width for the doors to slide across. We'll also need two rectangles for the front sliding doors, two for the interior walls, and of course the pieces for the drawers as well. Don't worry about writing all of this down. I've included a template later in this video that you can use to make the same cabinet that I did. You also need the legs. Here's a quick look at a cleaned up version of the shapes that we just drew. To build this, I'll be using thin sheets of craft plywood. They're 1 8 of an inch thick and just the perfect thickness for miniature furniture. If you're making this by hand, you can of course cut these shapes on wood with a sharp knife. If you're doing that, I recommend using 1 16th of an inch thick wood as it's easier to cut by hand and half the thickness of 1 8. I'll be using a laser to cut these shapes out. A laser will just allow you to get incredibly accurate cuts that you can reproduce time and time again. Before we cut those shapes out, let me show you the machine that I'll be using. This is my newest laser and it's the Creality Falcon 2. It's the 40 watt version which is capable of cutting through and engraving on so many materials such as wood, glass, stainless steel, ceramic, acrylic, and much more. Here is the laser beam and it's enclosed in the shell which protects the surrounding space from the beam. Here is everything else that was in the box. The machine came mostly assembled which saved me so much time. I've put together several lasers in the past and this is a welcome change. You really only need to attach the laser and the power. However, this machine does have one additional and incredible feature that I've never used before and that's the air assist. It's an air pump that pushes air through a hole straight to the area that your laser is cutting. It helps blow away any debris and smoke so you get cleaner cut lines with minimal burn edges. The laser itself simply slips into its holder as you tighten the screws to lock it in. There are a few cords to plug in, but no tools are required. Of course, never ever forget to properly secure your cords in their slots so they don't get caught underneath the laser. That's one of the most important things you can do to ensure you're being safe. Safety is incredibly important to me when using tools like this, and there are so many safety features on this laser. In addition to the laser itself being enclosed in a protective case, there's also this big red emergency stop button, and a safety lock you need to use a key to unlock. In addition, the safest way you can use any laser is with a honeycomb platform. It's great for ventilation under the wood that you're cutting, and it also protects your work surface. You don't want to accidentally engrave your work surface. I got this mainly for the added safety feature because this is a very powerful machine. Another safety add-on I chose was this enclosure. It came in a compact box and was super easy to put together. If you use your laser in the indoor space, good ventilation is essential. There's a hole and a pipe that you can vent out all the fumes. It's fireproof, helps with the smoke that you'll get using the laser on wood, and also helps keep your machine dust free. I use mine in an open garage and I'm able to cut various materials with no problems. I will note that I took the cover off while filming just so you guys can actually see the laser in action. I love the fast speed of this laser. It cuts at 2500mm per minute and I was able to cut out all these shapes for this project in under 10 minutes. To create the shapes in a format that the laser can use, I'm drawing the shapes in Photoshop. You can also hand draw them and scan them into your computer. 
What I'm doing here is basically tracing the shapes from my inspiration picture to get a true to scale replica. Here's the top, bottom, and back pieces. Then I add the two side pieces. For the doors, I'm tracing the shapes of those two so the scale is correct. I mark where the handles will be as well. Then of course, I need to trace the legs because they add so much character to this cabinet. Don't worry about the different colors I'm using here. That's only to show you the different pieces we'll need. Here I'm tracing the drawer front decor piece. The drawers themselves are really where I can't simply trace, but that's not too big of a deterrent. The drawers may seem complicated, but it's just a series of rectangles as well. Here's the drawer front, the bottom, the two sides. I make a mark where the rails will be in pink here. And here's the final piece for the drawer, the back. Then you need your interior walls. This may seem like a lot of effort, but you really need to only do this once. And then you can create as many of these models as you want. This technique is helpful in creating any type of cabinet you like. If you want to build this exact one, pause the video and take a screenshot of this template. The first thing I do with this image is convert it into a SVG vector file. This is the website I use to convert my files. Once I have the SVG, I just import it into Lightburn. You can use any laser software you like, and I just use Lightburn because it's my favorite. These black lines are where the wood will be fully cut through. There are some areas that I just need engraved and not fully cut. That includes the tracks for the doors to slide on and the door handles that you see in green here. I saved the file on the memory card that was included with the laser. Okay, now we're ready to cut them out. Take it to the laser and insert it into the slots. I lay down the sheet of wood that I'm using and hit the frame button to make sure my file fits the board that I have. This outlines the area that will be cut. Once that's confirmed, I click start and wait for it to do its magic. Here are all the pieces. Once the pieces are cut out, you can already assemble them. However, I'm first going to sand down all the edges. Doing this removes the dark lasered edges and takes the wood back to its natural state. Make sure to sand all the grooves and crevices as well. You see the difference a little bit of sanding makes? Now it's time for assembly. First, grab the bottom piece and the back piece. Glue them together at a 90 degree angle. Then glue on the two sides. Next up are the two interior walls. For perfect placement, I use my doors as my marker. Just place the doors against the two sides and trace a line on the side closest to the middle. That's where the walls should be placed. Assembling the drawers is pretty easy. First glue on the front decor piece to the front panel. Then glue on the sides and the back to the big bottom piece. Then just glue on the front panel. The sides have these tracks on the outside that will allow it to slide in and out. We'll need four of these drawers. They'll be placed in this middle section here. Let's install them. For the rails, we'll be using craft matchsticks. They fit perfectly into the groove of the drawer sides. Cut them so they're flush with the back of the drawer. I first put a spare piece of wood on the bottom as a spacer for the bottom drawer. Then I glue to the matchsticks before putting it inside the cabinet. Once the glue has a minute to dry, pull the drawer out and the rails are installed on the walls. Then slide your drawers into place.
This next step is optional depending on what you want to put inside this cabinet. I added two rectangle pieces on each side for a shelf. If you plan on putting something tall inside this cabinet, I would definitely skip this step. Next up are the doors. And to install them, simply place them in the groove of the bottom piece. Then add on the top piece, making sure the doors are seated in the top groove as well. I carefully add glue with a toothpick and place the top on. Now your doors should slide perfectly. And the drawers are open. The last thing we need to add are the legs. I glue a set to the front edge underneath the cabinet. Then I add another set to the back edge. Lastly, add the little thin rectangles perpendicular to the legs to finish up this area. Once all the glue is dry, your cabinet is pretty much complete. You can leave it in this beautiful light wood color, stain it, paint it, or do anything else you like. I chose to stain this a warm tone to match my inspiration picture. It really brings out the wood grain and gives it so much character. Seeing this transformation was my favorite part of this project. Lastly, you can choose to seal the stain with a varnish or a wax. I opted for some clear varnish to add a bit of shine. And that's it. This mid-century modern cabinet, or dresser, or credenza, or buffet, or anything you choose to use this for, is all complete. This was so much fun to put together, and I hope you learned some helpful tips along the way. I love adding new tools and techniques to my craft and hope this inspires you to do the same. I'll see you next time. Bye.